What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Austin Show. Today we're looking at the Mattel Masters of the Universe Revelation Master vs. Deluxe Wave 1 set of figures. So with this we have these three different packs starting off with this Savage He-Man that comes with Orko so it looks pretty cool. So it just looks like a sort of like caveman or barbaric version of He-Man there and then Orko as they appeared in the Revelation show. So nice set there with both of those figures. Then we've got Trap Jaw which looks cool. Looks a little bit weird especially with like the mouth joint and the tongue sticking out. That looks really weird. Comes with a bunch of his accessories and then the outfit for the motherboard cult and speaking of motherboard cult we also have triclops which is the leader so he looks pretty awesome there of course we have like our standard look for triclops how he appeared like at the beginning of revelations and then we have him in the cult like leader outfit and everything as well that we can switch onto him so that looks pretty cool as well so these are deluxe figures so we get the figures as well as some additional accessories so like with the two bad guys we get the additional clothes and everything and then of course with that savage he-man we got orko thrown in with some additional weapons so nice looking packs all together Together, come with a lot of accessories to you know to make them the lux set and everything so very nice looking figures so i'm excited to check them out so let me get them out of the box and we'll take a look at them all together well, let's start off with Savage He-Man. And so I read an article about this character because for me, I've yet to watch part two of the Revelation series. So I don't know exactly what happens with that. Well, I read an article way before that season came out of Kevin Smith talking about Savage He-Man. And he said he went with this version as a version of Prince Adam if he calls upon the power of Grayskull. But since he doesn't have the power sword, like what would it do to him? And so with his creation, it came up with Savage He-Man here. So it's more like of a barbaric or like wild man version of He-Man. And it says he gains the primal race with fury strength and speed of 10 he-man so he's pretty much just becomes he-man just more of a wild version not intelligent and stuff like that so he's just, just this wild savage looking man so he's pretty much mostly naked as you can see he has a fur loincloth very similar to how he-man normally does i like the like leather design from the underneath there and the little string tied around and then his hair is longer and more like unkept and stuff so it gives that nice savage looking design and then his body himself is all like dirty so like in all his muscle crevices and stuff they have this overwash like this paint overwash and so it makes him look super dirty especially compared to like the normal one where he's much more clear but you can see it all the way down to his toes and everything so it's much more of like a bare or naked version of he-man but i think he looks pretty nice you know pretty basic but it does look nice in general so pretty nice looking figure just overall so let's go and look at his movement so the head can twist around a little bit it's hard yeah especially with the hair so he's not going to get much movement at all there but you can look down that far and up just about that far so not much movement at all there shoulders can come up about 90 degrees there and rotate all the way around we get a bicep twist the double elbow joint that bends up that far actually not too bad and then we get the wrist that twists around and flex back and forth and then we go to the ab crunch so we have the upper crunch here so crunch forward crunch back so pretty decent crunching overall and a little bit of a twist in there so not much just a little tiny side to side it doesn't even stick and then we have the twist at the waist so it can twist all the way around there the hips can come up about that far so under 90 but actually not too bad out to the side a little bit pretty close to doing the split so not too bad there and again these have the hips where they kind of drop down so they drop down to do the movement so you have to kind of push them back up in the body there so they kind of click back up to be straight on again so that's nice but the thighs can twist all the way around we get the double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back close to kicking his own butt just a little bit off and then we get the shin twist there at the middle of the leg so it can twist all the way around and then the foot can flex back and forth well it looks like we have a bit of an issue with our ankle design there but can flex back and forth and twist side to side so not a bad figure overall and with all the lack of clothing and stuff this is probably going to be the best figure we have like movement wise because we don't have you know stuff getting in the way messing with his joints so this is probably the best version of a he-man figure we're going to get because he has the best movements now he comes with a number of accessories so first off we get some additional grip hands here so we have two grip hands since he just has two like open flat hands there with like the curved fingers so of course I always need to have the grip hands for the weapons and speaking of weapons first off we get a battle axe so this big broad axe here looks really nice of course very classic to like the original he-man figure and stuff that came with the axe so that's nice well we have the axe there we also of course get the sword of power which we always have to have for he-man but since this is the version without the sword that we don't really need this but they did include it anyway so we have that and then finally we get a spear as well which for savage he-man fits much better so this is definitely what i'm going to want to put in his hand but nice spear design you know looks very much like a handmade spear so made of rock and stuff all smashed down with a tie it on to the stick there so just really nice design so let's actually put this into his hand 
So there I got this spear in his hand and that looks pretty cool. You know, it does look very savage with the spear and then with his overall design with just the loincloth and everything. Looks very nice there overall for the savage version of He-Man. And of course this pack does also come with Orko. So we have a little Orko here, obviously not so little with this set, but we have Orko here, which looks nice again, how he appears in the show. So it has that more like realistic sort of look to it as opposed to the cartoony of like the older ones, but very nice looking version overall for Orko. So of course he's a magician from Trolla and he begin losing losing his health during the time without magic. And at least for me, he's only seen the first part of the series. He sacrifices himself to stop Sergalo so the rest of the group can make it into Preternia. So very nice looking figure overall. Orko's just always been one of my favorite characters from He-Man, so I like his design. So he has the all black face as usual where you don't see it's just the, got that ball design, but with the eyes in there, he's got like the wizard style hat, his pointy green or blue color ears, but the ears coming out there as well as his arms sticking out under his clothes. So he's got the like magenta color, like robe outfit with the purple scarf on the top there wrapped around his neck and hanging down there in the back and then he's on the stand here to help him like float in the air it doesn't work very well like the articulation in the stand is kind of loose so he kind of just flops around in there but it's a nice clear base here I think it looks overall nice with like the pieces sticking up and everything and then it's just a nice clear details up into Orko's body there so it kind of sticks on so he floats in the air which actually looks pretty nice like I said but you have to worry about at least with ours it kind of flops back and forth easily but for his articulation his head can twist all the way around of course can look up and down a little bit there for that his shoulders can come up about 90 degrees rotate around within there and that's really all you get and then of course just have the articulation up on the stand there that can twist all the way around and move back and forth a little bit but for the figure itself doesn't really have much more articulation and everything but pretty nice looking figure overall I like that and then I do like the base that it comes with I just wish it was a little more stiff so it wouldn't fall around so much so it could actually just sit up there and everything but yeah it keeps falling down so you just got to get in that right perfect position for him to stay up but there we've got our Orko and our Savage he-Man there put together which is pretty cool and with this of course we can bring in our regular version of He-Man I forgot to show him with just the other one so you can see the comparisons there so overall skin is much lighter and cleaner of course his hair is not as long and he has the overall He-Man outfit with the battle armor and everything where this other one just has the loincloth so I just wanted to show those off comparisons there so overall I think this pack is cool getting the Savage He-Man and Orko of course you have to have Orko and I do like this version of He-Man a lot so if you don't necessarily need it for your collection you could probably use it for something else maybe in a different toy line or something but just pretty nice two figures here together and next up we have trap jaw which looks pretty cool you know does look relatively like your normal trap jaw but again in that more modern upgraded I guess realistic sort of look to it but I think he looks pretty cool overall there's just one minor thing with this but again overall from the series I just know from the part one that he's in Skeletor's army during the attack on Castle Grayskull and during the time without magic he became a higher up leader in the motherboard cult and received some mechanical upgrades to his already upgraded and mechanical body so pretty nice but he looks pretty cool like I said you know pretty similar to how he does overall has the blue skin as usual so the blue skin there going down his arm and into his hand and then he has the different colors so he has the green face with like the pinkish color helmet and then of course the big jaw piece that gets torn off and replaced the circle on its heads for like the zip lining and stuff the black mechanical pieces added onto it into his robotic arm there so he has the arm here we already have just like the gun piece on it there so that's nice he has the bell on it looks like the wrestling title bell there in the green with the skull on it and then the two hooks to put his additional accessories and stuff but as like the normal he-man stuff underneath with like the bell and the fur there of course the black pants with the neon green on it which looks cool you can see some of his actual blue legs in there as well going into the all black boots that go up high up his legs but very nice looking figure just overall except for his mouth this is the thing that just annoys me with this figure is the like weird tongue stickied out there I don't know why it had to have that I don't like his teeth I wish it was just all green and then just had the trap jaw that would just cover it all up but you can still see like his upper teeth and everything but I just think overall that just looks weird with his tongue sticking out there just a weird looking figure and that's the only thing I don't like about this everything else though is pretty good just overall just that little minor annoyance but looks very good overall otherwise so for moon's head can twist all the way around it can look up that far and down that far so not as much movements in the neck on this one shoulder on this side can rotate all the way around and move a little bit back and forth so has some movement there which is nice and then at the gun we have some rotation and then like an elbow joint there that can bend to 90 degrees actually can go back the other way too but mostly forward there so not much movement of course but it is a robotic arm but for his normal arm we can come up to 
to 90, rotate all the way around. We get the bicep twist, the double elbow joint that bends up that far, so not too bad, just about 90 degrees, and the wrist can twist around and flex back and forth. And then as usual, we have that crunch right there, so crunch forward, crunch back, so not too bad. A little bit of twist in there, of course, twist all the way around at the waist that's hidden behind the belts. Hips up under 90, out to the side of the far again, very close to doing the splits, but I have the drop down hip joints, thigh twist, double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back. It does feel like there's a shin twist like right at the top of the boot piece here that can twist around. Yeah, you gotta just kind of force it around there. And then we have the foot that rocks back and forth and can twist side to side. So once again, not a bad figure at all. Has some more limited movements, obviously with the robotic arm and then the armor pieces, as I mentioned before, but still not horrible. Now for accessories, first off, he comes with an additional hand. So we have like the open sort of palm hand there since he comes with the grip hand. And then for his robotic arm, we get the additional stuff. So again, we already have the gun there, like the laser tron, but then we get the other attachments of the grabber and the hook. So again, we can just switch these out. You just pop the gun piece off and then replace the others. So it just pops right off there and then you can just put on whichever. It's a little bit hard to get popped on, but you can just pop it on there like that. So now he has the hook hand. But now back with the gun there, we can take these additional pieces and hook them on his belt. So he has the belt there with the little hook pieces. So with the actual hooks on the weapons themselves, we can then take and slide them down in there. So he has them just hooked on his belt. I feel they don't really hook on too well in the way they're designed and stuff. Being so big and bulky, I wish they would be more sideways like that. But with the placement of it, they have to kind of stick out the side like that. So I don't like that look too much and I wish the hooks were maybe more to the back but unfortunately that's the way it's designed for this so that's definitely not a good look so you can't really store your weapons on there unfortunately. But as I mentioned for Trapjaw, he is a part of the motherboard cult. So we also get the additional stuff for that. So the clothing. So we have this robe piece we can put on him. We have this like, over robe piece. So more of the things and then a belt as well. So let's try and put these on him. So there he is with the robe on on the top. It was pretty easy to get on. You just have this whole Velcro piece down the back. You just separate and then it easily slid up on his body. So that's not too bad. Now for this, I assume we'll have to pop his head off and then slide it down on and put it back on. So let's get the head off. So there's that robe over the top of that as well. So yeah, I just pop the head off. Off, slide that on and pop it back on and then we have the belt as well which I hope will fit on here I assume it goes on over the top that'd make the most sense for me I just hope it fits around here I did go ahead and take this off belt off as well to help with some of his thickness in the midsection because again I didn't know if this would fit on so I did take that off but let's see if I can get it on and so I got it on there and I assume that's how it goes like I don't really know for sure because I didn't really see him in this outfit I don't know if I just missed that part or if it's more from part two but it did pretty easily just snap around there just had to pull it a little bit to get it but it wasn't too bad at all so I hope that's how it's supposed to go and I think he looks pretty decent overall in the cult robes but of course for me I'm just going to prefer him more just in the normal outfit just because I think that's you know how I picture him to look like anyways so it's nice he does come with this since I assume he did appear in this in the show but as I said I'll just keep him in his normal outfit. And finally, we have the Triclops figure. And so again, he was in Skeletor's army during the attack on Castle Grayskull. And during the time without magic, he became the head of the motherboard cult and would perform ritual miracles that would force his followers to drink water that would transform them into cyborgs. And so like with especially part of him and we'll kind of mentioned with Trapjaw, but with part of him, you can see that start to like take hold of his body with more like cyborgness starting to appear on his arms and throughout his hands. I don't know if it'll show the details. Yeah, you can see some of it there. So he's a little bit changed, but with this version here, it's supposed to be just your normal triclops you know more how he did appear at the beginning of the season so looks very nice overall you know does look relatively just like your normal triclops where he's got the green helmet piece with the three different eyes of course with the three different visions and then just the normal face i like the chin strap coming down there but he's got the hair hanging down then just like a normal human face and then he's got the armor piece so he's got the green on so I like the lighter green with the darker green and then like the bronzish orange color there with the center pieces and the spikes coming off he's got like the normal he-man belt there and that orangish bronze again with some black fur and then some black shoes as well again just like normal human and the rest of them is just you know just the normal looking human besides the details there on his arms as i mentioned but other than that it just looks like your normal triclops which is pretty cool now for movements of course we have the eyes that can switch so with this piece you just twist the head around there and you can line up the different eyes i feel they lock in the place like pop in the place or whatever but they are kind of off centered so you have to kind of twist them around to get them into position right so again it's like locked in there so it's a little bit off to the side so you have to kind of twist it back a little bit but overall pretty nice to have the three different eyes selection there and then we get the head that can look down that far and up 
that far pretty much because of the hair. So better movements than the trap jaw, but it's still not the best. The shoulders can come up about 90 degrees there and rotate around within there. We get a bicep twist, a double elbow joint that can bend up that far, and then the wrist can twist around and flex back and forth. We have the ab crunch there, so crunch forward, crunch back, so very little crunching there, twist all the way around at the waist, hips up 90 or under, over out to the side, you know, can do the splits once again, thigh twist all the way around, a double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back, and then of course we have the boot with the shin twist at the top of it there, and the foot can flex back and forth and twist side to side. So once again, same movements as the other figures, just more limited because of his armor pieces. And now for accessories, first off, we get a set of open palm hands. So the open hands, they didn't have that like cyborg designs or whatever there. So if you don't want to have the grip hands, but for the grip hand, we have his weapon of the sword. So the normal like triclops looking sword where it looks like that moon shape design and stuff looks pretty nice overall. So let's pop this in his hand. There we have triclops there with the sword looking pretty cool, ready for a fight. But then he comes with a bunch more accessories as we saw in the package. So he comes with the outfit for the cult leader so we have this additional head again with like the triclops eyes there that can twist around and everything but then he's got the big like weird helmet point design and then it's got the motherboard colors of like the maroon color and the black so we have that there and then we also have the under robes very similar to like trap jaw had only his is much longer here so that's i guess pretty nice and then we have the over robes again for him being the leader has much more details and more royalty looking stuff to it with a cape and everything looks much nicer overall so let's go and put this on him so here I have Triclops in the motherboard outfit and it looks pretty cool overall. So of course he's got the longer maroon color robe there with the outfit on over the top. So he's got the big like shoulder pads, the two cloth pieces hanging down with the triangle square and circle designs on it, which looks nice. And then of course the black and maroon color like outfit throughout the design with the black cape hanging down there in the back and it has the belt on there around in the midsection. So overall it looks pretty nice of course and that helmet piece or headpiece there as well. So it's supposed to be like a popish looking design and stuff. So it looks pretty nice overall on him like I said, this would not be how I would like put him on a shelf or anything but with how it appeared in the movie this is an excellent like execution of it like I usually don't like cloth materials on figures because they you know just are too big and bulky and get in the way but with this it like fits perfectly on him like doesn't limit to any of the movements or anything and has no issues so looks very nice just overall so I do really like that a lot and of course we can go ahead and bring trap jaw in here with him as well so we have the two members of the motherboard cult there together so that looks pretty awesome with both those in the outfit so even though it's not something I'd prefer and like to have on a shelf or anything. It is cool to have them both there together with those looks. And with both figures back in their normal looks, we can throw in Skeletor here and have them part of Skeletor's army. And of course, those look pretty cool together with our bad guys in their original looks and stuff just look really good there all together. So very awesome to get both of these bad guys with their classic looks as well as the motherboard call option as well. So very cool overall for these figures. Well, there we have our Masterverse Deluxe Wave 1 figure that overall I really enjoyed. So we had the Savage E-Man with Orco pack, which was really cool. And then the Deluxe versions of Trap Jaw and Triclops. So all three of these packs were really cool. And so if you like Masters of the Universe, I can't recommend these enough. They were all really cool and I just really enjoyed them. But let me know what you thought of them down in the comments. And if you enjoyed my review, let me know with a thumbs up. But I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all stay awesome out there and I'll see you in our next review.